guys, welcome to this special Craftsy Live event where we are going to be decorating these gorgeous, beautiful jumbo gingerbread cookies. This guy is almost nine inches tall and I'm gonna show you how to make him step by step. My name is Ann Yorks. I'm the owner of the Flower Box and I'm decorating here in my cookie studio in central Pennsylvania. Where are you from? Go ahead and put it in the chat. And we are going to be decorating these cookies. I'm going to give you some tips today on how to bake such a large cookie. I also have some presentation ideas for you. We're going to go over all of it today. I do want to mention that on this page, you can also find the download with some step-by-step -step photos, the cookie recipe, the icing recipe, everything that you need to learn how to make these cookies. You can get this free printable guide. So I'm excited to um, share that with you. Hey, Katie. Hey, Sandra. So glad you are joining us. Now, if you have questions while I am decorating, go ahead and put them in the chat. I would love to answer your questions about baking and decorating. This is the season that we all love to decorate cookies. So I would love to help you out. Now, I love decorating gingerbread cookies. Like I mentioned, this guy is huge. He is eight and a half inches tall, but I also like these little itty bitty ones too. I have this gigantic gingerbread and that guy, you can just see his feet. Um, he hangs in the cookie studio all the time. He's quite a big cookie cutter. I don't know. There's a picture of me with that cookie cutter. I'm a huge fan of gingerbread, if you can't tell. So to bake um, these cookies, you might be wondering uh, just how to use this cookie, how to bake this cookie. Um, why such a large cookie? The canvas is so much fun to make this cookie. And I have a couple other examples to show you. One of the things that I love about this project is unlike a gingerbread house, there is no assembly required. So once you decorate this guy, he is good to go. You don't need to worry about walls falling down or any of that stuff. I do have um, some tips about baking this large cookie, but I definitely recommend that you bake this cookie um, separate from any mini sized cookies. So the difference in size, these cookies really are going to bake at a different rate. So I recommend not baking a very jumbo cookie next to a very um, small cookie. I was a, able to fit about three of these large cookies on one half sheet. And with a single batch of dough, these notes are in your decorating guide, you can make three to four of these jumbo cookies. So if you're hosting a cookie party and you want enough cookies for everybody at the party, you might need to make a double batch of dough if you need six to eight of these. Um, we just had a huge cookie party and it was so much fun. Uh, decorating. Everybody had a blast with these sprinkles. So let's take a look at these sprinkles. I have this sprinkle mix. You can find tons of sprinkle options um, at the store online, all those things. But I do particularly like this sprinkle mix because it has these green swirlies. It also has some little gingerbreads. And we're going to be using those large green swirlies today. I also have a couple other examples where we're using some of these other colorful sprinkles. I'll show you show you those. So when you're baking this large cookie, you just want to be careful not to bake it next to a small. Keep in mind that with a single batch of dough, you can make three to four of these size cookies. Um, one of the steps of your decorating process might be to trace that cookie cutter and plan out your design. This is especially fun if you're decorating with children. They will have a chance to think through how they wanna decorate their cookie. I also like that since this is such a large cookie, breaking it up into different icing areas will really make the decorating process more fun. So as you can see, I put this polka dot sweater on my cookie 
And it really helped me to break up instead of having one huge brown cookie to have these different um, icing areas. So tracing that cookie and sketching it out could be a lot of fun. Here's another version of that. So just have fun with the planning. The sketch will also help you figure out your icing colors. So in that guide, I give you um, an indicator of what icing colors I'm using on this particular design. But when you sketch it out, if you're going to come up with your own creative design, sketching really helps you think through those icing colors. Today, we're going to be using the icing in a piping and flooding icing consistency. So on my piping bags, I have a tip number two. That's what we're going to use for our outlines and details. And that icing is thicker because we want it to hold its shape. We are also going to be using this thinner flooding icing in the icing bag. That's what we're going to use to flood onto the surface of the cookie to create that nice flat surface so that we can add details and um, decorate once that layer has a chance to dry. Now, if you are new to royal icing, the icing that I'm using today, again, you can find that recipe in the handout. Just click on the link in the chat or on this page and you can get the link to both the cookie and the icing recipe. So when I'm decorating with um, royal icing, I do like to use a pipe and flood decorating method. So what that means is I'm going to outline the cookie first with my piping icing, and then I'm going to flood in those different icing areas. So I'm using that same recipe in two different icing consistencies. When you're getting started, if you're new to decorating, feel free to download that guide that shows you kind of the order of how things are outlined in flood. Sometimes just seeing the order of operations can be really super helpful. When I'm holding my icing bag, I have it in the palm of my hand and I typically keep one finger on the coupler to steady out my piping. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the outlining and flooding. We're gonna get started. Um, Diana asks, this is such a great question. It looks like this recipe is actually a sugar cookie. Can it be done with gingerbread instead? Absolutely, there are tons of gingerbread cookie recipes out there. Actually, Craftsy has a gingerbread house class taught by Stephanie Kappel from the Hungry Hippopotamus, and she provides a gingerbread recipe with that class as well. So you can have fun with the recipes. I personally love vanilla, <laughs> can't help it. And so my sugar cookie recipe is what I'm using to decorate this, but definitely if you wanna use the gingerbread recipe, go ahead and do so. All right, so I'm gonna start with my outlines and I'm going to start with my sweater first. So I have this uh, collar, I have some cuffs on the sleeve, a little hem there. And using that piping icing, I'm just going to start outlining. Notice I'm just letting that icing fall onto the surface of the cookie. That gives me a nice round tall barrier for when we go ahead and flood in those icing areas. So there's the collar on my sweater. I'm going to add the cuff on the sleeve. Now I prefer to use tip number two when I'm doing my outlines and many of my details. I like the um, size of the outline. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I just had a little icing pop. There was a little air bubble in my icing bag. Don't panic about that. You can just go ahead and patch that up. Just wiggle your tip in there and fix any little mistakes. Once you flood in that cookie, you won't even see that that happens. So don't get too worked up if you're new to cookie decorating and little things like that happen. You can easily go ahead and fix it. Um, if it's a pretty significant thing that you're not sure you can fix, there are tools like these boo-boo sticks. They have a flat end and you can just scrape those off. That can really help with... Um, just scraping off and starting over. And it is not wrong wrong to do that. So 
All right, so now that we have those turquoise um, icing areas on there, I'm gonna go back in with my red piping icing and finish off the sweater outline. And if you ever have just a little dry icing in the tip, you can just wiggle your scribe in there and clean that out. So I want to close off these icing areas. We want a little barrier so that when we flood in, these lines really hold back that flood icing. So I'm gonna close off this sweater with a piped line and just bring that down. Now red icing can be a tricky icing color to make, to get it to the red. So I am using a food gel and there's lots of different brands out there. Um, for this particular red, I'm using Christmas Red from Chef Master, but you can find lots of good options. The gels are highly concentrated and they really help to develop that color quickly without having to add too much um, food color to it. I do also recommend making that color the day before you decorate if possible. Um, not only does it break up the work, but the color will bloom with time. And so it will deepen over time. Plus your color will also darken as that icing darkens. So when you're looking to make a nice vibrant red or even a black um, to do your Christmas cookies, consider using a gel. They're more concentrated. And also consider mixing your icing the day before you decorate it will break up the decorating process and it will allow those icing colors to deepen in color, which is kind of nice. Now, as I work my way around just outlining this cookie, I'm just letting that icing fall into place. Notice when I get to a point like right here where the foot meets the leg, I will touch down and drop an icing anchor. That will just allow me to move my piping bag in a new direction. I'm going to just close off and outline our final, whoop, <laughs> had a little icing pop there. And it happens to the best of us. There is no panic needed though. I'm just going to scrape that off with that little tool. And I'm just going to touch my icing bag right up against where I left off and keep piping around his head. So those things do happen. If you notice, there is a little bit of a seam in that area. I'm just going to turn him so he's facing me. I'm just going to bump that in so that it's a more rounded look just using the tip of my bag. So now our first step of decorating this cookie is complete. We've outlined the sweater and his arms and legs and his head, and we're ready for the next step, which is going to be flooding the different sections in. So royal icing, as I mentioned, we're using in two different consistencies. And this flooding consistency is has a flow to it. And I would compare it to um, like a honey consistency. So it's not like watery, but it's not super thick. Um, you want it to self level when it's on the surface of the cookie so that you get that nice flat surface. It does take a little bit of time for that icing to dry or set up or get a crust on it before you can start adding the details. So I'm going to start the flooding process, but before today's live demo, I did prep some step outs of these cookies in each stage. So I'm going to flood this cookie till we get here, then I'll flood and then we'll do our details. So there is drying time that is required for using the royal icing. Now, when I flood in, I really like to be generous with the flood. I just find that that gives the best finish or the best look to that icing. So I take my flood icing and I almost outline that icing area with the flood. It gives me a nice 
clean look to the edge of the cookie when I flood in this manner. Once I have that outlined, I'm ready to flood in nice and generously. I'm giving a good squeeze on my icing bag and I'm just letting that icing flow onto the surface of this cookie. Now, if you are new to cookie decorating, I do have a class on craftsy.com. It's called Celebrate with Cookies. This class is awesome for beginners. And there is a great icing overview that happens. I cover lots of techniques like the one I'm going to show you today called wet on wet. So while this red icing is still nice and very wet, we're going to add these little polka dots, this pattern. This is called wet on wet because we're adding the detail while the icing is still wet. I'm also using the turquoise flood icing. That will allow these dots to melt down into that red and create that beautiful flat pattern so that we can add those details once this area has a chance to dry. So I'm just adding those dots in, filling in that space and you can see as time passes, those dots are settling. So these are already flat and those are settling down. So Cassandra asks, if we're decorating with kids, would you recommend we flood the whole cookie and leave, leave them to just decorate thinking the kids probably won't wait for drying time. So Cassandra, it's really going to depend on the age of the children that you're decorating with. I've decorated with lots of kids from age two and three all the way up to, you know, teenagers. And sometimes what I have found with the younger kids is if you outline the cookie for them, they can do the flooding in because it's almost like a coloring book when they're flowing that icing into those different icing areas. If you're decorating with elementary age kids or teenagers, I think they can probably do the full process, but maybe you want to have some snacks for them to enjoy while they let some of their icing dry, or maybe even have some games. We've played relay games while cookies were drying, um, Christmas trivia. We do fun games called Guess the Cookie Cutter if you have a bunch of cookie cutters. So there are ways to kind of pass the time if you're doing it as a party. Um, if you're doing multiple designs, let's say you have one large feature gingerbread cookie for your kids, and then maybe a smaller candy cane cookie and a Christmas ornament. When they start one cookie, as they're working on the next, the icing on the first cookie is setting up. Typically, by the time they get back to that first cookie, the icing is kind of ready to go, if that makes sense. So you decide on the age, you know, what's appropriate for your kids to be decorating. But you might be amazed at how capable they are, how messy they are. You have to kind of let that go. <laughs> um, but also how creative they are. It's a super fun holiday tradition that we have in our family. So I hope that helps um, as you plan your cookie party. So I have my cookie sweater on here. And typically, I don't like to flood in an icing neighbor because it can bleed the blue into the red and cause some blurriness between those icing areas or just some color bleeding. You might see the red seeping into the blue. So I do like to skip over the neighbor and flood the next icing area over. And I'm going to go ahead and flood in all of these brown sections because I have the collar, the cuffs, the hem, those are all going to prevent the red from touching the brown. Now, as I'm flooding in, again, I'm being very generous with that icing. Um, if you don't add enough icing, if you kind of flood it in like this, and have lots of cookies showing and you're kind of scraping the icing into place like that, 
it's going to be very time consuming. Plus, you probably see bumps in the surface of your icing once you're already done. So definitely flow in. I typically don't leave too much cookie showing um, when I'm flooding in. Just flood in this little hand on this side. Now, if you are looking for tips on icing colors, that guide that you can click on the link in today's chat will also have a materials list just stating what items I'm using to decorate these cookies. And there is an icing guide showing the colors that I have used um, to create these cookies. And that should help as you prep for your own decorating event. Now that flooding is very relaxing, <laughs> lots of fun. <laughs> so just enjoy the process and don't feel rushed as you're um, creating your cookies and having fun. There's always lots of chatter happening around the table. So at this point, I will set this cookie to the side and I'm going to bring in the cookie that I've already prepared. Having all these large cookies in front of me is making me really, really hungry <laughs> for a cookie. Oh, Trish, I love that you enjoyed doing gingerbread cookies or biscuits, as you call them, when you were younger. I'm so glad you're joining us for the demo. Yes, lots of holiday memories. I know I got my cookie start decorating cookies with my mom in the kitchen every holiday. So now these icing areas have had a chance to dry. I can gently touch on them. I flooded these two hours ago as I was getting ready for the class. Um, you can usually see um, if your icing is set up. If it's still looking a little tacky, give it a little bit more time before you jump in because you don't want to accidentally stick your finger into the fresh icing and put a dent into the design. Hey, Susan, glad you can join us from Illinois. Welcome. All right, so notice I'm just flooding in this turquoise icing. I love the combination of red and turquoise at the holiday season. Uh, it has lots of pop to it, and it's a little bit of a variation from the traditional red and green. So I'm just getting this little icing area all the way filled in. Once you've flooded in that icing, sometimes it's helpful in these smaller icing areas. I'm just going to wipe off the tip of my scribe in these smaller icing areas to just kind of tap that icing into place. Now I have my fancy little Christmas tree scribe um, because I'm a regular decorator. But if you just decorate occasionally, um, a toothpick will do all the same tasks that the scribe will do. So there isn't any pressure to rush out and invest in a bunch of extra things. There are lots of things within your kitchen that you can already use. Now, one ingredient that you might not regularly have on hand that is found in the, um, in the royal icing is called meringue powder. Meringue powder is an egg white substitute. It also has some cream of tartar in it to stabilize your icing and a little bit of a vanilla flavor to it. You can find meringue powder online on websites like flowerbox.com. You can find them at uh, craft stores as well in the baking aisle, but that ingredient is an essential ingredient that um, makes this icing dry like a candy and really allows us to add those details. So um, Carly asked, should we put the sprinkles on the frosting before it dries? Would it wrinkle? You can actually do that either way. 
Carly. So you can put the sprinkle on now while this icing is wet. This is the one that I just flooded in. So I have that little swirly um, sprinkle and you can just drop that onto the wet icing and it will adhere to the wet icing and just kind of stay in place. You can also take your sprinkle and add a little dot of icing on the back and that icing acts as a glue and you can glue that onto your um, cookie as well. So sometimes it's easier to drop it on when it's red. That's typically what when it's wet, sorry, not red or red, <laughs> um, but you can also glue on sprinkles as well. I did use some regular sprinkles on this girl gingerbread. And you can see on the hem of her dress, I had a lot of fun with the details. I used a star tip 18, which created that fun texture. And then I added those rainbow sprinkles and I added those Carly while that icing was still wet. Same with this little, I don't know if you can see, but I put a little gingerbread man mm -hmm. <laughs> sprinkle on her bow. Um, that was part of this sprinkle set. So I was just having fun exploring with these different sprinkles. Um, and again, I did put that on while it was wet and it didn't, you don't have to worry about it cracking that icing or wrinkle it. Um, so I hope that answers your questions. But if you guys have more questions about decorating, baking, or even sprinkles, let me know. I'll answer them as they come in. All right. So now once all of these icing areas are flooded in, I feel like this is where the fun really starts to begin because um, the details, you can just have so much fun um, with them. With our gingerbread, you can do wavy lines. I have some loops on here. I showed you the little gingerbread girl that had the rainbow sparkles with the fancy hem on her dress. Um, I also have a large gingerbread boy where I did some wavy lines and I added sprinkles onto those details just with some loops for his hair. And he just looks so cute next to these little mini <laughs> versions. Um, that just cracks me up the size difference. So you can have lots of fun with these details. And that's also where sketching out your plan can kind of help you think through before you jump onto the cookie surf surface. Um, now, there is a question in the chat from Malou. How do you keep the royal icing dry in high humidity environments? If it's possible, I recommend um, decorating in an air conditioned environment. So if you have access to air conditioning, that does really help. Um, with reducing the humidity in the room. If you can run a dehumidifier, um, I do run a dehumidifier in my cookie studio in the summer months here in Pennsylvania. It can get quite humid. And so I find that the, the dehumidifier is just whisking the moisture out of the air. Um, I also use a um, fan and I'll show you, I have a little tabletop version here next to me, um, that is blowing over the cookies. I have a large floor fan in front of my bakery rack and using a fan will really speed up the drying on the cookies. And it will, um, also leave behind a really nice shine. So it's not wrong to let your icing dry naturally. If you're just having a cookie party, you're an occasional decorator, but if you're wondering how to get that really pretty shine, can you see that shine to the icing there? Um, that is really created by drying that cookie in front of the fan. So if you're able to use air conditioning, use a dehumidifier or use a fan, that will really help if you are working in a high humidity environment. So um, yeah, royal icing and humidity are not always good friends. 
Okay, so now I'm going to add some of these details and I'm going to add them using both my piping icing and also some flooding icing. So I have some pink icing here for the cheeks. Um, I have some white icing for the little icing squiggles I'm going to do. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to start actually with the um, icing squiggles. And I didn't feel like I wanted this to be super symmetrical. I wanted to make it have a whimsical look to it. So I didn't keep it as even as I kept the arms and the legs. Um, but I'm just going to go across with that white icing. And I'm just going to go up and down. And I have actually flooding icing in this bag because I like this, because it's such a large cookie, I like seeing just sort of that soft rounded look to the icing instead of a chunkier look that you would get using the piping icing. So now I have the little icing stripe across the top. I'm going to add the little squiggle going across the arms. which is super fun. And if you need to thicken it up a little bit, you can always go back in, just run another line right in there while the icing is still wet. Once it sets up, you can't do that. So there is a window for getting that done. And then I'm just gonna, I'm going to add that squiggle down at the feet. And that is just so cute. We already have all those classic gingerbread vibes going on once you add those white squiggles. Now, let me show you how to add these eyes. Um, these eyes I'm adding also with that flooding icing. So if you remember that flooding icing, it's just the thinner icing that we use for flooding in. But it's also great when you want nice rounded details like eyes or these rosy cheeks, you don't want a peak coming off of that um, off of that detail. So these eyes have lots of life in them. It's a nice large black dot. And then I'm going to add two little white dots for the catch light in the eye. That really just brings this gingerbread to life. Now I haven't shown this yet because my bags were already open, but this bag has not been trimmed yet. When I trim my icing bags, I like to keep that seam side up. I will put my pointer finger under the tip, rest my scissors on there, and just give a gentle snip. I love to keep those openings nice and small. It gives me lots of control over the flow of the icing on the bags that don't have the tip. So I'm going to add these black eyes using the flood icing. In my experience, the black icing continues to settle. And so I am always reminding myself to make these eyes smaller than I think to because they will widen out as this flood icing settles down. So keep that in mind when you're doing your faces that the eyes don't need to be as big as you think they do. They will continue to settle as they the icing kind of rolls out and starts to set up now while that black icing is still wet i'm going to go back in the upper right of of the black and i'm just touching down gently and i'm letting two little icing dots fall into those eyes to create the life in the eyes and really bring that to life that is looking so cute. This gingerbread is really coming together. Okay, so now this little guy needs a nose. Again, to keep this detail rounded, I'm actually using the same red icing that we used on the sweater. And I just kind of like to make those sort of an oval shape. 
Um, depending on what sprinkle mix you get, you might be able to use sprinkles. Um, this one has lots of little round balls, which would be great for like Christmas ornaments and things like that. But you never know, you might be able to use some of your sprinkles to do some of the details as well. Now I'm going to add the smile. I have a tip number two on my black piping bag and I'm just going to add the curved line. And this face is almost done. I just wanna add some rosy cheeks to my little guy here, actually my big guy. I love decorating large cookies. They offer lots of room for the details. So just a rosy cheek on either side is such a classic gingerbread look. Now this cookie is almost done because we've added the white, we've added those swirly sprinkles, and now we're ready to just add a little bit of texture to the sweater. And it's always fun to give sort of a realistic look to a cookie or just kind of a nod to the fact that maybe this guy is wearing a knit sweater. I know there are a million amazing knitting classes and tutorials available through Craftsy. So I hope all the knitters are happy to see this. And to, to do that, I'm just going to go up and down adding that little zigzag. I bet all the knitters wish knitting was just that fast. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same. Oop, got to be careful. You don't want to bump your other icing details. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But you can turn your cookies so that you don't disrupt anything that you've already added. So there we have one cuff. I'm going to add the other side. I just love adding those details. I'm using a nice even squeeze on my icing bag just to get a good flow of icing coming out. Now, if you have some cookie decorating experience, but you're looking to create a more efficient decorating style. Um, one of my classes on Craftsy is called Smart Cookies, and it's really all about efficient cookie decorating. It's probably my favorite class I've done, and there it is packed with tons of tips on going through the decorating process. I highly recommend that. Um, Susan asks, I've never iced cookies before. Does it, all, does it always need to be in bags? And how many cookies will these little bags cover? So Susan, no, cookies aren't always decorated with icing bags, but typically when you work with royal icing, you do use a bag just because it's a way to reduce the mess. Um, there are ways to dip cookies in royal icing. So um, that is an option, but often I use these bags. Um, you can also use a bottle as well if you're new. A squeeze bottle um, will work. But I find it on these jumbo cookies, you're going to need about three to four ounces of icing to cover such a large area. And there are suggestions in this decorating guide that you can click and download of how much of each color to make to make these cookies. Um, but for an average size cookie, not this huge jumbo, almost nine inch cookie for an average size cookie, I would say usually one completely full icing bag will decorate eight cookies. Then you need to either refill or make a new bag. Um, so I hope that helps as you get started with your icing adventures. Um, if you are decorating with a group of people, I would make a couple extra icing bags for each decorator to share. Usually one set of icing for every three to four decorators is sufficient so that everybody has something to do as they're decorating and they can share those icing colors. 
adding loops is such a fun detail to cookies. Um, sometimes if you're practicing those icing accents, it can be really helpful to pull in a paper towel and practice a couple loops on there just before jumping onto the cookie. This requires just a really nice even hand squeeze as you let that icing fall down onto the surface. But don't be afraid to just kind of think things through on the side before you jump onto the cookie canvas. It will definitely give you a lot more confidence if you practice once or twice first. All right, that is the final detail. Oh, I wanted to show you how to kind of fix this little, can you see I kind of crushed the icing just a little bit there? That happens. Um, and that's okay. I'm just going to use that boo-boo stick and kind of remove that little section that got smushed. Um, and then I'll just add a little bit more where that happened. If you remember that somebody is eating these cookies, you will not feel quite so much pressure to make them perfect. So don't feel like you have to fix every mistake, but if it bothers you, there are ways to do it. But just always keep in mind, they don't have to be perfect. It's really about the process and the fun. And especially if you're decorating with a group, it's really just about the experience. So don't let those little things trip you up or ruin your cookie time. All right, so you might be wondering, what do you do with such a large cookie? I mean, I just think this cookie is so much fun to decorate. So my first suggestion is, just have a cookie party, invite your friends over, make a bunch of jumbo cookies and see, you know, could somebody come up with a Hawaiian gingerbread or a bodybuilder gingerbread or a hula dancer? I don't know. There's just tons. <laughs> I don't know how you would do the bodybuilder, but I would love to see it. Maybe I'll try that. Um, you could box this guy up. This is um, a white cookie box with some little mini gingerbreads. You could even personalize this cookie across the bow if you're giving it as a gift. It made such a fun um, Christmas gift or a hostess gift. You can see I have lots of fun little details on this guy with the sprinkles on there. Also, if you are hosting a Christmas party, I'm going to actually move my gingerbread out of the way here and bring in my final idea of how do you use such a big, fun, gorgeous cookie? These cookies could really just be the centerpiece of your dessert board. Um, I have all these fun little treats, peppermint pretzels, some peanut butter cups, some little gummies. These are the little gingerbread mug huggers that you can put on your coffee cup, just some fun little candy mixes. But that gingerbread is the star of the show. So if you really want to dress up your dessert, dessert table or a dessert board this year, um, I feel like that gingerbread makes such an amazing centerpiece. So as you start getting your plan together for the holiday decorating season. I hope you'll consider this adorable jumbo gingerbread cookie. And if you make these cookies, I would absolutely love to see what you make. I know Craftsy would too. So you can tag us on social media. You can find me at the flower box shop on Instagram and Facebook. And you can find Craftsy on Instagram and Facebook. Go ahead and tag your cookie party or your finished cookies, and we would love to see what you make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're looking for tons more cookie fun, definitely check out my three classes on craftsy.com. I have Celebrate with Cookies. It's great for beginners. Smart Cookies is all about efficient cookie decorating. And then I also have Cookie Decorating Season by Season. It has a fantastic lesson for Christmas and cookie projects that will keep you decorating all year long. So until next time, Happy decorating. Bye, guys.